Ah, no! That's my fault. I mean, who else's fault would it be? What's up guys? Welcome back. Continuing the saga that is things arriving breadcrumb style in the mail from the Sephora sale because everything was sold out towards the end. I have collected my thoughts so far on the products that I feel like are the worst things that I accumulated during the sale and I think that that's valuable information. I also saw on a forum online recently that will remain unnamed that some of the videos people really miss watching are like full face of like products I hate kind of videos and I just think that they are pretty fun even though the makeup look typically turns out pretty bad. So I don't have an item that I hate. I mean, thank God. You would think <laughs> you would think I wouldn't keep that many things on hand that I really don't like. I'm uh, sorry. I don't have one for every step of my routine, but that's good because it's going to allow me to balance out the things that I don't totally like or that I find difficult, hard to use, haven't gotten my head around yet even with the things that I am comfortable with and maybe I can make something like, you know, that I'm okay with wearing for the rest of the day <laughs> happen on my face. So I have quite a few things and some of them actually are things that I really love. So hopefully somewhere we will find a happy medium and it will end up looking okay, but it remains to be seen. Time will tell. Let's go ahead and uh, jump in. Y'all, we have the worst pet names for Copper. Like, I'm not sure if he'll end up being a brainless full-grown dog, but he is a boneheaded puppy. <laughs> and like, I literally call him Dingbat more than I call him Copper. He is a, a pure blooded dingbat. Yeah. Um, all right. The first thing I'm actually going to start with is the In Beauty Face Glaze because I think that with the foundation that I'm planning to try and make work today, it can only help. <laughs> so the In Beauty Face Glaze is, if you're unfamiliar with it, it's just kind of like a neutral, slightly shimmery kind of primer. Copper, do you want to be on my channel? Is that what you're telling me? That would be utter chaos. Let me see. Come here, idiot. Come here. Come here, stinker. Oh, yeah. Who's a big idiot? Who's a big, beautiful idiot? Wow. Wow, what a big, dumb idiot. Hi. I know, guys. It's terrible that those are, like, pet names for a beautiful, beautiful creature such as this. But, like, he just runs into walls and falls off of beds and tries to eat AirPods and like, he's just kind of a stinker. And the way that he falls asleep, he makes nests behind the couch cushions and falls asleep like he's dead. <laughs> like roadkill. So this is our copper boy. He's getting pretty big. He's a big cuddle monster. Yes, he is. Wife to cuddle. Wife to cuddle. Big snorry guy. Farts a lot. You know, our last dog was not particularly dignified and copper is following suit. You want him? Christ dog. <laughs> I did that to you yesterday. I said the same thing. That's funny. Oh boy. Well, that's a that's a charming way to start the video. Now my hands. Ooh, now my hands smell like dog. I'll be right back. Okay. I've probably put it in the thumbnail, so it won't be a surprise to you. But today I'm going to really try and make this work. The amount of effort that has gone into trying to understand the appeal of the new Makeup Forever HD skin. This is a reformulation, but a lot of the people who love it have said that they do still love this, even if they don't love the addition of the fragrance in it. So I'm like, I still want to understand what the appeal is because the first time I bought it, I went on a wing and a prayer based on what I thought my shade match was online and I was wrong. And then I went into the store and I got sh actually shade matched and it looks like it's gonna be pretty good and it still looks a little bit weird. And I'm just gonna try and like actually showcase to the best of my ability, like what it's going for. Like not try and shoehorn it into my way of wearing makeup, but actually try and like <laughs> wear the Makeup Forever HD makeup as it was intended to be worn. So I'm going to try this. But yeah, even when I was like, See, look, that's like not an ideal shade. Even when I was swapping this out at Sephora, the lovely gentleman behind the counter said that the shade range is weird. <laughs> He's like, I don't really get it. You know, even my best shade, he was saying this about himself. He said even his best shade is like still kind of off. And I think it also has something to do with the fact that, you know, I'm not accustomed to wearing this much coverage. And when I did try to sheer it out to more, to less coverage, to more of a sheer finish, it doesn't love to do that. <laughs> and so 
that was something that kind of was a stumbling block for me specifically. And that's why I'm like, okay, I will put on the amount that this formula wants to be at. I think that some formulas are really, really good about flexibility and others have a preferred coverage level that they like to be worn at. And I really want to just kind of like ask this foundation what it needs. It's so weird to me though, how like some days, Makeup Forever specifically, some days that smell, the fragrance that's in it is undetectable to me. I don't have COVID. <laughs> But like it really it has happened with the reboot foundation some days I literally don't even notice it and then some days I'm like, oh my goodness What is that smell and I don't really understand why because like today I hardly even notice it Okay, so it's a touch more matte and I also feel like it doesn't want to be worked The way that I like to work things into my skin. It don't want to do that it does not want you to do that. It wants you to like spread it out and let it dry. But look at that, look at how it's starting to oxidize and be the wrong color. It's just not good. <laughs> like the color, the, the actual like shade for me is not good. And by the way, the shade is 1RO2. Like what's happening there? I don't know. I don't know. Like why does it look so strange and like brassy? <laughs> Anyway, I'm going to start with my Item Beauty concealer here and see if that's light enough to counterbalance that. I hate having to work back into a foundation to try and like equalize my shade. Cause then I end up with more makeup on my face than I really wanted to. But I think that's it kind of goes without saying with this foundation cause it's more coverage than I'm used to. But if the finish was like knock it out of the park, you know, better than real life, I could be convinced but is not. It's like this really, really poor exaggerating satin on me for some reason. And I, I always moisturize like crazy. I even sprayed my face with Fix Plus like right before I got on camera to like re -duify everything. Mm hmm yeah. And I honestly, I mean, I guess this is a final thoughts thing, but like I feel very satisfied in saying that like, I just don't really get it maybe with the entire concept of the Makeup Forever HD skin because I think that this is what it's supposed to look like and it just is not for me. I do not get the appeal. Especially when something like the Fenty Ease Drop exists. If I want a satin finish, like that's what I'm gonna go for or the new It Cosmetics CC Plus Nude Glow, which I still absolutely adore. <laughs> it's been like a week, <laughs> still adore it. A lot of things can give you a hybrid finish with wear time. Like for me, it doesn't have to be satin in order to get wear time out of it. But at the same time, like it might just not be meant for my skin type and that's, that's fine too. I don't think I'm going to be able to get through this video without mentioning the fact that, and I, I showed it on my Instagram, but like, I just went to Mac. I went to the Mac store and that's going to be my next video. I just didn't want to like literally review it and give you guys some kind of final thoughts review, like less than a day after I bought it and tried it for the first time. But guys, it sent me, I put a face of makeup on in my bathroom mirror with a bunch of stuff that the lovely sales consultant at the Mac store showed me and I bought, I bought so many things. I put this like really lightweight, gorgeous, not the Mac I remember, <laughs> face of makeup on and I was like, excuse me? Excuse me all the way off? Like what? Like it was just this so beautiful, so lightweight, so better than real life, but also looked real in person and long wearing gorgeous face of makeup. That's going to be my next one. And like, I, I keep reapplying it being like, okay, am I going to have a change of heart? Am I going to be able to, you know, give you guys kind of like caveats or anything like that. And you know, I'm going to have my thoughts together because nothing is like perfect, perfect ever in the world, but we've been sleeping on Mac. That's all I'll say on my channel. I don't mean the entire beauty community. <laughs> Steph from Beauty Unhyped messaged me. She's like, I feel like I'm the only person who still likes Mac. <laughs> and I was like, girl, to the extent that I am able, I am going to try and turn that around. <laughs> all right, I feel like my face just keeps getting yellower, but it's not gonna get better because the next thing that we're going to put on is the Say Beauty powder which you guys already know, not a fan, but we're doing it anyway, because this is the train that we're on today. This is the face of my least favorite makeup from my haul. Yep, that's about to happen. And I did pull the Rare Beauty as well because I do love the Rare Beauty powder. So we will just 
try and make this work. But I'm gonna be using powder blushes and like powder contours and stuff, so I did wanna go ahead and powder this. Plus, this is not exactly like a hybrid texture face of makeup where I then wanna go and put like a cream blush on top. It's too satin for that. It would disturb it too much, like I can already tell. It doesn't have an emollient quality to it and it wouldn't hide the blending that I would have to do with a cream, you know? like. The textures would be really dissonant and obvious. There would be a very clear line of demarcation. <laughs> like, if that foundation matched my skin, it wouldn't now. And like, anybody who's like, well, you're applying a lot of it. You should be able to apply as much powder as you need. Okay, I have dry skin. But like, oh my god, what's happening? What is happening? I swear it was not that color when I put it on. <laughs> So funny, oh my gosh. So much for a face of makeup I feel comfortable wearing for the rest of the day. What is going on? Look at my neck and look at my face. I feel like it's getting oranger. <sighs> okay, we're gonna, <laughs> we're gonna come on tour. I don't even know why. Like this is the kind of thing where I would abandon ship if it were a different theme of video. <laughs> I would be like, okay, wash it off, start over khaki. But it's because I already knew that like these are things that I don't particularly love, but I, there's a part of me that was like, maybe, maybe it'll go differently today. No, <laughs> it's not so far. <laughs> All right, I am going with what I do like right here. This is the Natasha Denona Contour Sculpting Powder in 01 Light. And this is just such a gorgeous, very, very sheer, lightweight contour that's gonna add a little coolness back into my face. Fingers crossed. I'm trying not to panic and we'll fix it all at the end because this is the kind of thing where when my complexion is like this wild looking, I try and fix it before I get to anything else and then I end up with way more makeup on my face than I really needed to because this is basically like the color my bronzer is gonna end up so you know there are parts of my face I'm not gonna have to fix if I wait till the end I think I hope I usually don't have to troubleshoot this hard because I would ne I would never normally just keep doing my makeup if it looked like this guys I'm looking like I went and shopped the drugstore CoverGirl foundation when I was in like eighth grade and I was like, close enough. <laughs> I'm going to middle school. <laughs> um, no. Bronzer. Oh, that's right. I actually pulled the say bronzer, but like there is absolutely no way I'm trying to cram a cream bronzer on my face. Like there's a difference between showcasing why something doesn't work and just using it wrong to self-sabotage. And I'm not gonna just use it wrong just to self-sabotage. So what bronzer do I wanna use? I need a powder. I don't think it's ruining much to say that I bought a bronzer at MAC, so here we go. I have a MAC bronzer. And this is in the shade Golden. And I remembered quickly how much I really enjoy their bronzer colors. It's just a really, really <laughs> see it let's put it on my neck and maybe that'll help this situation here but yeah it's got like a teeny tiny touch of like minerality but not glitter and I know it's like what I should expect at the Mac store for somebody to be a true expert in like everything that's there but like she was a true expert in everything that was there and I still found it like very easy to talk to her like her vernacular was so similar to mine like she's like I really like this one but it doesn't dry down all the way. And I was like, oh my gosh, thank you for telling me. You know, she's like, it's really good for mature skin, but it kind of bothers some people because it doesn't dry down all the way. And I was like, you speak my language. You know, she, it, I don't know. She talked about like cool and warm tones and I was like, it was just like having someone who knew exactly what I was talking about. And so that's, I think a large reason of the, like why I got home and liked everything as much as I expected to, because I was in a hurry. I don't know, I didn't give myself enough time to go in there. And so the stuff that I did pick out, I was like, okay, I feel like this was a really good option as long as everything that she said is true and everything that she said turned out to be incredibly true. So before I go in with like a light colored powder or anything, I wanna talk about another brand that I personally have been sleeping on and I talk about this all the time and like how I wanna kinda of deep dive back into the brand. But one of my issues is as I'm kind of going through their complexion products, I'm like, I don't really feel like their complexion pro like ranges are as robust as I thought that they were or that like their bronzer ranges are as robust as I thought they were and that is Clinique. I've been going into each of the products and being like, oh, I remember this being kind of a cult favorite or I remember kind of hearing about this product in passing, I should definitely try it, I need to dip a toe in X, Y, and Z, I wanna be credible on this and that. And then as I look, I'm like, there's one shade of bronzer 
in 2022 for Clinique, like a brand that can afford to release several bronzer shades. Maybe it was where I was shopping, you know, maybe it was cause it was like, I don't remember whether it was on the Clinique website or whether it was on the Sephora website or what, but it just struck me as a little odd. So when I did order from Clinique, it, it must've been on the Sephora website cause I bought these on the Sephora sale. I did just end up picking up a couple of shades of the, what's this stuff called? Cheek pop. So I got Heather Pop and Garnet Pop, and they're those blushes that you always see that have the really pretty daisy embossed into them. But these happen to be a couple of the shades that have a little bit more shimmer to them. And so they remind me a little bit of the bronzers. There are a lot more shades and they're more nuanced than the bronzers because they're not designed to be bronzy blushes. I feel like that makes all the bronzers like kind of lean towards a certain family of like temperature. And these have a little more nuance to them. They might be a touch shimmerier, but when they go on the skin, they're so sheer. I haven't really found an issue. The kind of more purple one is actually the Garnet. Well, I guess that makes sense. Yeah, the Garnet Pop and the other one is Heather. So I'm going to start with Garnet and then I'll do Heather as like the focal point. Going into Garnet. See, I mean, we're sheer. And I don't even wanna like say that that's always, like that's so sheer that I kind of feel like it wouldn't show up on a lot of people. <laughs> like it needs more pigment than that. But I do really like it. I just like it for me. I'm not really sure that it really translates. I guess I didn't, I, I'm, <laughs> I'm realizing a little bit more how Eurocentric the, the Clinique line is more so than I thought. I thought that they were more inclusive. All right, I'm going in with a pop of Heather, Heather Pop, kiss of whatever, <laughs> blonzers. I hope that the blonzers, I, I heard rumblings that the blonzers from Barrett Minerals were going to release more shades. So I hope that that was a true rumbling. Ooh, y'all. <laughs> I had the most stressful week last week. Mike was gone for three days and I was alone with Simon. I mean, he was at daycare for two and a half of those days. And then the third day, which he usually goes for four days a week, the third day he came home with a fever and that fever just, nevertheless, she persisted. It was such a gnarly fever and it was for three days straight. And we kept calling the doctor and they're like, worry about it if it's over 105. And we're like, okay, my child, you could fry an egg on his stomach, but sure, he's not 105, he's just 104. Then the fever goes away and he breaks out in this like crazy rash. Yes, it's roseola, that's what it's called. And the rash basically is actually a good sign because it means that the fever's over and that he's not contagious, but my, 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 is it scary looking. And you know, you have your beautiful child that you gave birth to that like literally doesn't have pores and then all of a sudden he's covered in this like welted rash all over his body and you're just like, oh, neat. I'm a bad parent. So that was what we were dealing with. And then he ended up staying home again yesterday and like having him home all weekend during like Easter and everything and just a sick kid. It means that like you can't go do anything to entertain him because he's just, he feels like garbage, you know? It was, it was a, wow, there's a big old hawk. Oh, wow. That's a pretty hawk. Oh, wow. Hey buddy. Don't eat my cat. This is the first day that I've actually like sat down and even like thought about my job <laughs> since like Ingrid and I filmed. And that was still touch and go because he was still like feverish in, in the other room. Dang, okay, I am gonna take a little bit of the Rare Beauty powder. It's pink. And I'm hoping that it kind of counterbalances some of this nonsense a little bit and blends it. Did that help? Eh. Mainly like here. I don't know why it's like glomming onto this particular part of my face. Bye bye, hook. Is that a little bit better? It's not really, is it? Y'all. I am, I'm like seriously having flashbacks from middle school where I'm just like bronzer and then I'm like, wait a second. Why does nothing work? Mm-hmm. Wow, okay. The next challenging thing. I'm not going to say that I don't like it because it's the thing I feel like in this collection of things that I need to get my head around. It's my job. And that's what we're going to try and do today is get my head around it. I also haven't tweezed my eyebrows in about 15 years because I have tried to open too many. Nope, that's not true. Mike pulled a tick off the dog with my tweezers and something happened to them and now they don't tweeze anymore. But also I've opened so many packages with them. They were kind of like due to be done anyway. Like, <laughs> No one should abuse tweezers the way we abuse tweezers here, but regardless, yeah. And if anybody's like swiftly typing a comment right now being like, I know how to keep ticks off your dog, it was a dead tick. But 
still, it was gross. Anyway, it's this. It's the Tom Ford Cream and Powder Eye Color in Naked Bronze. And the main reason that I'm like not <laughs> wanting to express distaste, but I really, really like to see it as a challenge that I need to surmount, is because I watched Hannah's video, her first video in her new location since she moved across the country. And she said that this is the only eyeshadow besides like one stick, I think, from Surratt that she brought with her for her entire cross country trip. And she never got bored of it. And it was amazing. And I'm just like, I got to figure out how to make this thing work because I don't get it. So uh, yeah, it's like this squishy stuff that, you know, looks a lot like the Charlotte Tilbury Oyster Pearl, the Ice Mesmerize. And then, I, you know, of course, being someone who really, really likes a good powder eyeshadow topper, like that is right up my, right up my alley. So that's the topper that goes with it. This bad boy is like $68. Stupid, 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 stupid. But since it doesn't totally dry down without that topper, I'm gonna go for like the thinnest amount first because the worst thing that's happened to me with it so far is just that it runs away from me. I end up like globbing it on really just wanting to achieve the really, really beautiful like brown gold thing that seems to be happening in the tub. And then when I get it on my eyes, it's like a, a cloud paint situation where I'm like, oh God, what do I do with all this product? <laughs> and then I'll layer her up a little bit here, but man, I just don't want to get too carried away. And then I'll pull out a brush. But I feel like the whole idea of this is that it's supposed to be something that's super easy the way that it was for Hannah. And I feel like as soon as I get this on, I have the instinct to pull out 10 other eyeshadows to try and fix what I've done. And that kind of defeats, kind of defeats the purpose a little bit, doesn't it? I truly don't know whether this is the right thing to do, but I'm going to go in with just like a regular fluffy brush and see if I can just blur it out. The whole thing is like, I want, I want the color impact of that brown but I feel like it's so tough to control that I'm scared to put too much on. And I don't feel like it simplifies my life because it's like one and done <laughs> leads you to believe that it's going to be quick, but it's kind of like one and one and one and one and one and I'm still not done. Still not done. I can do a one and done with a, a powder eyeshadow a lot more easily. I just feel like it's easier to control because it's like, you don't have to wait for it to dry down. You don't have to judge so much like the amount that you're putting on. And for all that work, we have something slightly brown, but I'm not getting that really, really beautiful richness that I want from this. Like, let's all have a reminder of what it looks like in the pan, right? That's what it looks like in the pan. It looks like it's gonna be this beautiful, like green gold brown. And in order for it to behave on me, I feel like I have to apply it so thinly. All right, I'm gonna do outer corner here and I'm gonna try and then, ah, no, that's my fault. I mean, who else's fault would it be? But I'm gonna use that and maybe get it a little bit underneath my eyes with another brush. I don't know. I said it in the video with Ingrid and I'll say it again. Like, I feel like a lot of times these kinds of shadows are for people who are not trying to change the shape of their eyes. And I'm trying to change the shape of my eyes with eyeshadow. All right. That's not so bad, right? Kind of smoky, kind of pretty. I'll just um, take a whole bunch of that foundation and apply it all the way down to like my belly button. And then no one will know that I'm not <laughs> strangely abnormally colored right now. I managed to achieve a little bit of that like gold glint there, but like, do you see, I don't, it's, it's the veininess here. For me, it's just not, it's just not doing it. So I am gonna like pull out my Hindash palette and like blend the crap out of that up there so that it looks more smooth because there's just something about that that like, no matter how much I blend, it's still gonna just look kind of like blotchy. Oh, by the way, the dress is from C, New York. I prefer the pink one, but this is from Rent the Runway. So beggars can't always be choosers. And I'm just going with the lightest deep shade. <laughs> so this guy right here and using that to fill in here, make everything look a little bit more like naturally contoured instead of skippy. And I will grab a smaller brush and do the same thing underneath here. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, that's better. And then I'll take the lighter shade and 
Do that to blend up here. Cover up where I haven't tweezed my eyebrows. Thank you, Hindash, for providing me with this means of hiding my sins. Okay, and then, you know, there's the topper, this beautiful, beautiful green gold. I don't feel like that is particularly challenging to use at all. It's just a matter of getting that brown the places that I want it. And especially for $68, I really feel like it should put itself on for me. It should feel like it's simplifying my routine and or the payoff should be something that I cannot achieve some other way. And I just, I don't really feel the magic in that sense. I don't really feel bad about that though because I'm essentially saving you $68, especially if you sit there and watch people obsess over it. Like they're not wrong. I'm not telling you that, that they're lying, that they love it. I'm just saying like, if you're like me and you're really trying to be precise about your blending because you have the same challenges that I do, like veins showing through your skin and a desire to maybe enhance slash alter the shape and the distance of your eyes with eyeshadow, like you're trying to create an actual illusion, not just put a pretty color on your eyes, then I don't know. I just think it's easier to work with a powder. And I did find an eyeshadow that kind of reminds me of this at MAC that I, I kind of like better anyway. So really all I'm doing, like this video is just one big teaser for that one. The thing that I was the most impressed with, with the eyeshadows coming back to the MAC eyeshadows was that even though I pick shimmery ones, they pick up on a brush, which is like unheard of now. There's so much kind of like understanding in the industry right now. It's like, if it's a really, really beautiful shimmery formula, don't expect to be able to pick it up on a brush. You're gonna need to stick your finger in there. Not with Mac. I was just very, very impressed with that. All right, let's do my brows and my eyeliner, my mascara. We're gonna come back and talk about a lip that's offending me. Yeah, I know. There's very few lips that I'm gonna kick out of bed, but this one is really offending me. And we will try and remedy this because it's still awful. Mm-hmm. previous video and that is that anything can be alleviated with enough finishing spray. The finish on this makeup cannot be alleviated with a finishing spray. Like there's no amount of glycerin that's going to make this the kind of finish that I like to wear, but also it just stands in such starch, harsh, harsh contract. Starch. Nope. <laughs> Still no. Stark contrast to my neck. It makes my neck look green and I am not green. Although everything's starting to bloom outside. So it will kind of look that way for a little while. Um, okie dokie, let's, what should we do in order to, <laughs> in order to fix this? I have an idea. I have my Lily Lolo here. The backbone of so many emergency concealing situations for me and it is their, what is it called? Mineral concealer. It's like a, it's a lot like the Mac Studio Fix press powder, except it's just in this, you know, little tiny delivery system and other things like this exist. I've just had this one in my collection for so long and it always does the trick. Adds a last touch of nuclear level concealing that can save the day. All I really need is to blend it into my freaking neck. 
oops. And that's just gonna end up, everything looks so cakey. Like around my nose, I'm getting little cracks and stuff. Like that doesn't happen to me ever. It's just not a texture I typically wear, something that dries down this hard. Oh my God, my under eyes look so old and dead. All right, let's do another one of these. I got a new Fix Plus, yay! Cause mine's almost empty. <laughs> Let's talk about this lip that I had really, really high hopes for because the concept is beautiful and the execution is flawed. So I ordered this little set, right, from Refi because I got the notification that it was all back in stock X, Y, and Z. And I, you guys just saw, been using the Refi brow gel. I think that she has a cool aesthetic and I love the way that she kind of does contour with more negative space. You know, it's like this really, really dewy face and a lot of times it's just like bronzer contour. Like br there are like these really, really exaggerated focal points that have just been done really hard. And then a lot of it is like backed off and looks like freckly and really, really glazed. And I thought that that would kind of make this an epic combo. So this, of course it doesn't have any writing on the package, but it's this combination of this very strange, oh, there it says, taupe lip sculpt. Yeah, it comes with this little guy. Maybe I should look on the website, make sure I'm using this right. But it says, uh, choose one of the six neutral shades of lip sculpt and define the lip with creamy blendable lip liner. Set the lip liner with our first world setter, designed to keep the color in place for lasting wear. The setter provides a hydrating matte and smudge proof finish. I might have been using this wrong. So you're supposed to do the lip liner first. I cannot remember who said this to me recently. Maybe it was Ted. But they said that like all of the Refi packaging reminds them of something that you would get at like, you know, a spy store. Like, I don't know, they're like spy weapons because everything has like these little, you know, concealed things. And my, my kid figured it out immediately, but I was like, where's the lip liner? <laughs> but it's, it's right here. But my kid just like pulls on everything. And so he would have figured out this little comb situation that took me an embarrassingly long time to find in her brow gel too. So anyway, this is, you know, I glazed over it, so to speak, really quickly, but it says, choose one of the six neutral shades of lip sculpt. I picked taupe, okay? It looks like it's going to be the most cool toned, like cooler than even my khaki lip liner. It looks like it's gonna be almost gray on the website. What? Y'all, that's like a bronzer. The thing that I said I was doing wrong maybe is that I was applying the other thing like right away and then trying to blend them together when I think that you're supposed to blend this first and then put the little setting stuff on top of it to make it stick forever because when I first used it, y'all, not only do I not love this color, but it wouldn't move. It wouldn't budge for anything. It was completely non-negotiable, so let's see. It's not the worst color in the world. It's just not taupe. It doesn't look anything like what I was expecting from what I saw online. Okay, let's try and blend this here. Yeah, I mean to tell you guys, that's not going anywhere. Like they say it's ultra creamy and blendable. It doesn't really go anywhere, 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 anywhere. Maybe a little, a little better than when you already have the setter stuff on top, but like, <laughs> I'm definitely agitating and bringing some blood to the surface here. I honestly just feel like I'm rubbing it off in order to blend it, you know? I wish it was like closer to my natural lip color. Okay, that's better than I thought. I was doing it in the wrong order. So this setter is a very, very interesting little formula because it definitely means business. It, it does what it says it's going to do. So then you, you do this number. And that's down. That's down, she's not going anywhere. And I feel a little bit better about that now that I know that I can move the lip liner around a little bit. I still have a major drawback and that is that that is not taupe, not on any planet. Certainly not on planet khaki, but it's pretty and it works and it's not uncomfortable. Doesn't taste like anything, that's great. So for like something that has technology in it that's supposed to like freeze down your lips or whatever, you expect it to have some kind of technology taste, you know, like some kind of like drawback, but it doesn't. And it's actually pretty nourishing even though it's matte and it stays movable, like the actual setter does. But it makes it so that the lip liner is like not movable at all. So since 
This isn't really like a finished lip look. And I feel like that's kind of the other drawback is when I use a lip liner and a clear gloss, I expect to be able to really like blend the two together. And with my khaki lip liner, it's such like a pleasant lip contour on my skin that I feel like it doesn't look like a lip liner <laughs> and then clear gloss the way that this does. This looks pretty much like exactly what it is, right? So I'm going to include something that I did purchase and do like <laughs> from the Sephora sale. And that is, and stay with me on this. I feel like I'm gonna be some kind of like TikTok person here because this is like, you know, don't sleep on a shimmery lipstick. Maybe I'll make a TikTok. Either way, this is Bamboo Pink in the Dramatically Different Lipstick from Clinique. I love this little applicator. The, the bullet shape is just really bizarre. It's like unnecessarily silly. I love it. I really, really like this color, but oh my gosh, it's she metallic. It's so glittery. Not even glittery, metallic. The word is metallic. And I put this on and I was like, oh, I look old. Oh no, oh, oh, oh no. But I wanna show you something. The whole idea of anything that has refraction in it like this is that it's supposed to kind of add dimension and maybe even like a plumping look to your lips. And the only reason I even thought to do this is because I had initial misgivings around one of the shades of the Wayne Goss lip gloss that is also very metallic looking, but when you get it on your lips, the combination of the metallic actual pigment and the super high shine gloss makes an illusion that your lips are a lot plumper and healthier. And so this only lacks the gloss when you get it on your lips. I'm having trouble putting it on because of this weird slippy crap on my lips. Hang on, there we go. Right? Miami metallic nightmare. <laughs> like, it really brings back so many like not good nostalgic memories of the way things looked when I was younger, right? Where you're just kind of like, when I was a kid, I was just like, why? Why are we wearing, like, why are women wearing like metallic lips? It just looks bizarre. You know what I mean? It kind of has this funny gray tint to it. And there's just something about it that is exactly what it is. And it's really, really hard to get around it. But if I blot that, I don't even need to blot it. It's super lightweight. It's a very, very comfortable formula. And also the color is absolutely gorgeous. It's just kind of that weird, the fact that like the finish on it is metallic that makes it just look so of a certain time. So I'm taking, this is just any, any old clear gloss, but it happens to be the Tower 28 clear gloss. You lay that over top of a metallic lip and I'm not even mixing them together. I'm just making sure that it's like actually even. And it is like the prettiest, healthiest, multi-dimensional kind of like plumping action. And it's just, all you do is essentially add a layer that evens out the way that the light hits your lips. So you get the beautiful pigmentation and kind of the depth that you would get from a metallic gloss without that funky like flat gray thing that's right, 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 right in the most like concentrated areas where you might've put a little bit too much on or it might gather in your lips. Now it's healthy, now it looks modern. You know what I mean? It's, it's definitely done, but it's updated and it's worth it because that color is just great. <laughs> it's great and it's really comfortable and it's really dialed in. We got, we got, we gotta do, we gotta do something here. I feel like, <laughs> Oh, look, it's not perfect. It's not perfect. I like the things that I knew I would like and I don't like the things that I knew I wasn't going to like, but let me move you guys out and we will do one last recap of my final thoughts on these products that ended up being duds <laughs> from my Sephora order. I feel like this hairstyle was kind of like a Hail Mary anyway and what it has it become is a monster of its own making. So anyway, anyway, anyway. <laughs> okay, so like I said, not ideal. That's not ideal. <laughs> that is not how I want to like leave the house looking. It's just not, that's not a flattering kind of complexion situation on me. And I really just don't feel like applying more and more and more makeup to try and alleviate it. It just is what it is at this point. So we will begin there. I don't feel like anything that I tried to do to help this helped the situation at all. Can we just, 
like marvel at the fact that that really looks like it's going to be the right color for my skin and it just got oranger and oranger and oranger the longer I wore it. Has this been oxidizing on anybody else? Should I have gone for like some kind of extremely pale color? Because like I have to compensate for the fact that the shade is just not going to match right when I put it on. Either way, I still really, really, really don't like this. I don't like the finish of it. I don't like the coverage level of it. I don't like the color of it. I don't like the, I don't like the formula. I don't like the way that it sits on my skin. I don't like the way that it cooperates or lack thereof with other things. It is a product that I have to fight against every single time I use it. And that's all I'm going to say about that because I feel like I'm belaboring it at this point. And then the combo of that, which I knew, you know what I mean? I knew what I was getting myself into when I did it, but the say powder, I'm only keeping this around for the moments where I have over brightened my under eyes and I need something to mitigate that a little bit. But you saw applied all over my face, their translucent shade is not translucent at all. It's whatever this color is, okay? This is not bronzer. <laughs> like It just, it made it worse. Like take a vote down in the comments whether you think it was the foundation or the powder that did the most sinning in today's video. <laughs> like whose fault do you think it was primarily or was it just truly a group effort between the two of them? So anyway, yeah, I don't recommend this for anybody with skin my color. These Clinique blushes are really, really beautiful and they actually show up better on me when I'm wearing a fairer complexion situation. But I think that that does kind of speak volumes to the Clinique thing. I need to double check their website. Let me see, I'm gonna look. Make sure that I'm not misspeaking or maybe Sephora just doesn't carry all of it because that's not uncommon. Okay, so they have two shades in one of their bronzers, one shade in their highlighter, one shade in their bronzer. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm not sorry, Clinique. <laughs> get with the program. Like I really, really wanted to deep dive on Clinique, but I honestly like for memory or maybe just for assumption thought that they had a more robust range than that. I'm not gonna deep dive and spend my money talking to you guys about a brand that's been around for this long and they're not even like making efforts towards introducing a bronzer for deep skin, you know? They're not, even, they're not even trying. Give me your thoughts, people who have more experience with Clinique, especially deep skin toned people, because I wanna know if like you feel very uncatered to, or if I'm just like not seeing the marquee products that, you know what I mean, are like more new and they've revamped and made more of an effort or something like that. Like I don't want to misspeak here, but it does look like they're using black bottles and not making makeup for black people. Yeah. So. Anyway, that is kind of where I have landed with Clinique and uh, I do like these blushes and I think they're very pretty, but you guys saw how hard it was for me to get them to show up even when I had artificially darkened my skin by like a shade. So, mm. <laughs> I just hope that the bronzers come out more shades because <laughs> these are really, really similar to the bronzers. The Tom Ford Cream and Powder Eye Color Fard a Paupieres Creme et Poudre <laughs> Naked Bronze for all of the hype, and honestly, regardless, even if I were just crawling out from under a rock and somebody said, this is going to change your life and in exchange, I'm going to need 68 of your US dollars, I think that that is setting forth an expectation that it's going to blow my mind. And it just doesn't blow my mind, y'all. I don't think that anybody needs to spend this kind of money on this and I'm, I'm sorry because I know that there are a lot of people out there who do like these, and this is the same delivery system as Sam Ravindal's um, Auric. <laughs> smoke Reflect. <laughs> I got there. I got there. And I like the Smoke Reflect better, I think. I still don't reach for it that much because I don't feel like this is something that's impossible to achieve other ways and I can get there a lot more easily other ways. So yeah, you do not need to spend your money on this. God, ugh. I have, and I've talked about this before, but I have this like dip right here because of a waxing accident when I was in cosmetology school, it like ripped my skin. And when makeup gathers in there, it makes me crazy. I feel like you can see that from space. The Clinique lipstick, I really, really like this with a gloss on top because I think that it is actually greater than the sum of its parts 
with a gloss on top. I think that it should go viral on TikTok in that respect, but uh, the rest of the one who me. This refi thing <laughs> is so weird. I mean, I guess I get it if you wear lip liner the way that like it's traditionally worn or at least traditionally by my measure. And that is, you know, you wear it to make sure that your lip color that you apply afterwards doesn't feather at the edges and like, you know, sink into lines and stuff. It's supposed to like contain your lip color. But the way that I tend to wear a lip liner is to contour my lips. And the way that this was presented online and in this little kit that it comes with, where it's got a lip gloss with it, you can buy it individually, but I feel like presenting it in that use case says, that's how you're supposed to wear it, is to wear it like a lip contour, make sure it freezes down with this funky gel that you put on it, and then you put a lip gloss on top and that should be it. That should be kind of your like natural lip contour color. There's nothing contouring about this shade and it is the coolest, fairest shade that's in the collection. And I still feel like it's like bronze or brown on me. I just feel like for what, it purported itself to be, it's not what that is. And so my expectations were disappointed in that sense, but it's not a bad product. I just think that like, it's, I don't think it's what she conceived it to be. It doesn't operate that well in, in those circumstances. You gotta pick a struggle, right? Do you want it to freeze down and never move? Or do you want it to be blendable? Those are two completely different things. And if you're gonna put a lip gloss with it, I assume that you don't wanna have like this obvious lip line, but that's all I could really achieve with this to the best of my abilities. So another kind of pass on this one. And that was kind of the idea of this video, right? I knew that a lot of these were going to be passes. I was going to try and surprise myself today. And I don't think that this is the worst face of makeup ever. I would wear it with a turtleneck. <laughs> No one knew what was happening here, but it took me a lot more work to get here, especially on my eyes, for what the result that I got from it. A makeup should be easy and fun and it shouldn't be as expensive as Tom Ford if it's not putting itself on for you. So my case rests. These are truly the most difficult, most disappointing, worst products that I got in my haul. And I hope this is just as valuable as me telling you that I love something. So yeah, guys, the next video is going to be my deep dive on Mac. It's not even really a deep dive because I'm not very good at getting in the weeds with things, but I did try to buy an entire face to try the things that I felt like went the best with my style of applying and wearing makeup. And so far, I have not been disappointed by the, ex the very high expectations that I had and the faces of makeup that I've gotten out of it so far. So enjoy uh, that when it happens. What? Look forward to that. And let me know any other lines, especially kind of these like OG, my mom's generation kind of makeup companies where you're just like, whatever happened to so-and-so? Cause like if Mac has been working behind the scenes over here, really finessing their game, but Clinique hasn't, I want to know who has and maybe who hasn't, you know what I mean? What, what is the tea? I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you want to keep hanging out with me on this channel, hit the button down below and subscribe. I would love it if you guys did. Thank you guys so much for watching and for hanging out with me today. I love you so much. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.